a few days ago when I shared some data showing that Spain was on the same trajectory as Italy. That is, even though Italy had 10 times as many cases, growth in the daily number of cases was almost identical. It took Italy six days to go from about 150 to 1,000 cases, and it took Spain the exact same amount of time. Now, uh, March 13th, we have updated data. Spain has just surpassed 4,000 confirmed cases. Why, why was this so predictable? It's because if you have similar societies with similar disease control measures, identical human biology, and an identical virus, the results can basically be predicted. When Spain reached 150 cases, that appeared to be about the critical mass after which contagion across countries is very similar. So to go from one case to 10 cases, from 10 cases to 100 cases, this is very hard to predict because each individual behaves very differently, randomly, right? But once you're at a critical mass, uh, that randomness kind of cancels out. And so the time it takes to go from 150 to 1,000 or from 1,000 to 10,000, uh, given a similar set of circumstances, is going to be pretty similar across different places and different times. The, the Italy and Spain similarities are not a one-off case. In fact, the Italian trajectory is the same trajectory being followed by the disease outbreaks in most of the Western European countries and in the United States. The only difference is that Italy is a few days ahead of these, these other countries. The US, Germany, France, the UK, Denmark, uh, we all seem to be on the Italian trajectory. Now let's, let's compare this with the outbreak in China, excluding the Hubei province. These gray lines on the chart show Chinese provinces. Chinese disease control measures, social distancing, active case detection, kept cases to a minimum. So there's some hope from China's trajectory. There's hope from other countries too. Uh, let's take a look at Singapore and Japan. They went past the 150 critical mass, but managed to keep growth thereafter to, to a minimum. And then there's South Korea, even though South Korea got to some pretty high numbers, since then they've, they've taken effective measures to control the outbreak. There are a lot of variables that we don't know, like the number of people that are infected but don't get tested. What we do know is that reactive measures uh, are very ineffective at controlling COVID-19. What we've seen in the case of China is that outside of Hubei, provinces were able to keep caseload relatively low by taking very proactive, very drastic measures. What we've seen so far in the outbreak in, the Euro in Europe and in the US is that these reactive measures kind of piecewise, slowly reacting to new cases with uh, incremental um, shutdowns, confinements, quarantines, doesn't seem to have been sufficient to slow the tide of the outbreak. What we do know about this disease is that it can spread very rapidly across a population and that it has very high mortality rates among uh, those who are particularly vulnerable. Um, we also know that it has the capacity to saturate and oversaturate health services. So even if it doesn't necessarily kill you directly, it can kill you or it can kill people by virtue of having basically uh, taken health services past their capacity. So my message, having examined these data, is that the scenario is changing extremely rapidly. We need to take this very, very seriously. We have not taken it seriously enough so far. Mm -hmm.